Now, at this point, you put all this effort into creating uh, a number of different scenes, some different content, uh, and you probably want to be able to record this in a certain order so that it sounds like an arranged song and then be able to export it so you can share it with your friends. So how could we go about doing that? Well, what we need to do first is record this stuff to the arrangement view. If you want to actually record these scenes in a certain order, in a certain arrangement, that's the best place to do it, is to record it to the arrangement view. So we can do that very easily. At the top of the screen, we've talked about the transport controls before. We have our play button, our stop button, and our global record button. This records everything that you're doing to the arrangement view. And when I say everything you're doing, I mean pretty much everything. So not only the clips that you're launching, but also if you change the volume, if you change the panning, if you mute a track, uh, if you tweak some effects, uh, all that stuff will get recorded to the arrangement view. Now, right now we don't have a bunch of crazy effects going on and I don't plan on adding too much at this point. Uh, we're gonna keep it relatively simple and focus just on recording our scenes to the arrangement view. Now, if you press tab, as we know, that brings us to the arrangement view. And right now the arrangement view is blank. So we're gonna start recording to it. Now, before I do wanna point something out, if you right click on this record button here, you have a few options. Well, you have one option <laughs> and it's start playback with record. Now, if this is on, the minute you hit record, it's gonna start to get ready to record. Okay, so if you're not prepared yet, if you haven't set up your scenes to start playing, uh, that might not be the best option. Now, if you right click on this again, we can turn this off. And there we go. And if I hit the record button now, it's gonna wait until I actually do something. It's gonna wait till I launch a clip before it starts recording to the arrangement view. So just keep that in mind. That might be helpful if you don't know exactly how you're gonna start the tune yet, or if you haven't prepared yourself uh, by making that scene launch enabled. So with that said, we're just gonna start recording a basic arrangement to the arrangement view, and then we'll talk about how to save this, uh, how to save it to make sure that all of our uh, included sounds are included in the folder, and then how to export this so that we can share it with the world. So first, let's record our arrangement. press tab, I can see that's being recorded over there. Each scene is going to be eight bars long, so let me keep going. Let's bring our melodic sound now. Question sample going. There's our last scene. Now again, I don't have to just stick with how the scenes are laid out. So what I'm gonna do is stop the 808 classic kit from playing. Then I'll stop the percussion. I'll go over here and hit my stop all clips button. All right, the space bar to stop recording to the arrangement view. I'm gonna press tab. And now I can see this is everything that's been recorded to the arrangement view. Now, as I mentioned before, let's go ahead and collapse our browser. Everything is grayed out because we were initially playing clips from the session view and each track can only play one clip at a time, regardless of what view it's being played from. So if the clips were being played from the session view, Ableton Live thinks that the session view is what should be in focus. And that's why all of this stuff is grayed out. It's not gonna play any of this content from the arrangement view. So if we wanna hear this, we have to hit our back to arrange button, which is this orange button up here. 
If we only want to hear the contents of individual tracks, we can hit the individual back to arrangement button, which is uh, here on each track. Okay, so we have our basic arrangement here, okay? Now there's a lot more that we could do with the content once it's in the arrangement view, but that's something we're gonna to touch on a little bit later. For now, let's say that we have this basic idea, we dig it and we wanna be able to export this. What do we do? Well, if we go to the file menu, we have the option to export audio slash video. Yes, you can export video as well. Uh, that's another little tidbit I'm saving for later. We look here, the rendered track. Now this means when you export your audio, what are you gonna hear? when you get that file. The render track being the master means that everything going through the master track uh, is going to be in the file that you get after you export the audio and video. At this point, we have everything set up in its default routing, so all the audio from these tracks is gonna go through the master. So if we render the master track, we're good there. Render start and render length. Now you wanna make sure that these are accurate. If you haven't selected anything in the arrangement view, then the render start is gonna be at the beginning of the first clip in the arrangement, and the length will be the length from the beginning of the first clip to the end of the last clip. So if you were editing a 20 minute mix down to three minutes, but you left like some little clip at the 19 minute mark, you might end up with a 19 minute file that has a bunch of blank space. So just make sure that the length is accurate and that it's starting where you want it to. Now the other benefit of this is that you could just select a certain length of time. Let's say for instance, I just select this one clip and I go into my export audio video. The render start now has changed to bar 33, which is where that clip starts at. And the render length is now only eight bars because that clip is only an eight bar clip. So if you selected anything in the arrangement view, check these two things before you export. Let me cancel that. I will click on nothing. I go back to my export audio video. And now we're back in business. Render is a loop. This is not really something you need to worry about unless you're trying to create, say, your own little loop library uh, and you want things that you export to be imported automatically as loops. This is not something that's really a concern to us right now. What is important though, down here where it says file type, you have two options, WAV file or AIFF. Uh, the WAV file is gonna give you the highest level of compatibility, although at this point, an AIFF file probably won't give you too many problems. Uh, unless you're sharing with a bunch of your PC buddies, just stick with Wave. This is always going to be the safest bet. Sample rate, 44,100 or 44.1 kilohertz. That's the sample rate of CD quality audio. Generally, this is going to be fine. Uh, if you're using a higher sample rate, I'm assuming that you have a reason to. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to create files that are a lot bigger. Uh, and if you don't have a way to play back these higher sample rate files, you're kind of wasting disk space. So... I won't say to not go higher than this, but if you are going higher, you should have a reason, okay? 44,100 is totally fine. Uh, most people hear MP3s that are like horribly compressed. <laughs> this sample rate is, and this bit depth is gonna sound better than you know pretty much any MP3 you're gonna hear. So this is CD quality audio, and if your settings are set like this, you should be fine, okay? Uh, the dither option, I'm not gonna get into that right now. If you're exporting at 16 bits, you don't need to worry about dithering. Uh, the analysis file, we can leave this off for now. Normalizing just means that it's gonna make sure that uh, the loudest volume in the file that you export is as loud as it can possibly be. Uh, this is not something I'm actually worried about right now. If you need to convert the, ex the file you're exporting to mono, you can turn this on. Obviously we're exporting uh, the entire arrangement. This should be a stereo two channel file. So I'm gonna leave that off as well. Now, you might notice that in the file type, there's no choice for MP3 because if you want to create MP3s from the songs you export from live, you have to export them as waves first and then use a third party uh, encoder to create MP3s. However, if you wanna upload your stuff directly to your SoundCloud account, it will actually create an MP3 for you in the process of uploading it to SoundCloud. So whether or not you wanna do that is up to you. If you do, there's the option. And this bottom area is for video and we're gonna to touch on that once I get to the part talking about video. So when your settings are set up to your liking, you hit export. And I'm gonna export this to my desktop. And yes, this is fine. So depending on how many effects and virtual instruments and whatnot that you have, the export process might be a lot longer. I didn't have a bunch of extra stuff going on, so my export process was actually pretty fast. If I go to my desktop now, let's go find that file. And here it is, my beautifully named file. There it is.
it is. And just for the heck of it, I'll go ahead and bring this back into our arrangement. And I'm gonna drop this in an area where there is no track and it's gonna create an audio track for us. And we can see this is the result of what I've exported. Now you might notice this file is significantly quieter in volume than uh, these up here. And the reason for that is because, if I go back here, I turned the volume of all my tracks down pretty significantly uh, because they were coming out a little bit loud uh, compared to my voice and everything else going on. So these are things that we can fix uh, and account for as we start to focus more on mixing, uh, EQing, uh, volume balancing, and things like that. So we're gonna touch on that and revisit this whole process uh, with a much deeper understanding of how to create a song from scratch. But at this point, you know enough to start playing around with some audio loops, to play around with some MIDI instruments, uh, to create some unique beats by uh, programming your own MIDI clips, putting things together in scenes, and creating some basic arrangements that you can then record to the arrangement view and export. And silly me, I almost forgot. Now, once you're done with all this, you're probably gonna wanna save it, okay? Exporting it is one thing, but if you wanna make changes later on, it's important that you have the project file properly saved. So, let's go into our file menu here, and let's look at what our options are. We have the option to save the live set. This is only gonna show up once you've actually named it, and you can't name the set until you choose save live set as first. So, we save the live set as, I've given it a name, this is my name, and once it's saved, which it currently is, I'm just gonna replace that. All right, so now save live set is gone because we haven't changed anything. There's no need to save the set. Below that we have save live set as, that's how we can name it. Now when you save live set as, when you name it, uh, the current version of the set, the set that you named is what you will be editing after that. Now. If you choose save a copy, what you can do is basically save a copy of this set in the current state that it's in, and that will get set aside. As you work on this new set, if you save it again, that set that you save will be uh, the most current version. The copy that you saved is essentially a snapshot of an earlier version of the set. So if I was to save a copy of this now, and then continue to work on it, and then be like, oh, you know what, I messed up. I wanna go back to that copy that I saved, then you'll have that sitting in the cut, okay? So again, the big difference, save live set as, once you save it, you'll be working on that set. If you save a copy, once you save a copy, a copy of the set gets saved and it's stashed away, uh, and then you can continue working on this and save it without affecting the copy that you saved earlier. Now, the most important option here is probably collect all and save. When you save a live set, let's just look at this here. Uh, and actually this set is probably not a good example. So I'm gonna save this to a different location. Save live set as, and I'm gonna save this live set to uh, a folder on my desktop, why not? Now, when I choose to save this live set for the very first time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a project folder that this set will live inside of. So hit save. All right, now what just happened? If I go back to my finder, I can see, well look at that there is a project folder that says level one lesson five V5 project. And inside that folder, we have the Ableton Live set dot ALS and this Ableton project info folder. But I've got a few audio samples in here. And let's say I need to move this project file from one computer to another that doesn't have the same audio contents, my audio samples will be missing. So if you wanna make sure that you save your audio samples in the same project folder, what you wanna do, is go to file, and after you save live set as, so after you've named it, after you made sure your Ableton live set is inside of its own unique project folder, you go to collect all and save. By doing this, it's gonna collect every single audio sample uh, associated with your set, and it'll save it inside of that project folder. So when you move that folder, you'll be moving everything, all the contents of your song. So we choose to collect all and save, and tick yes on all of these boxes. Once you hit okay, it's gonna save your uh, set along with any samples and put them in the same project folder. So I'm doing that right now. Got my nice little spinning wheel here. And eventually it's gonna collect my samples and put them inside of that project folder. So let's check this out. I look here. Level one, lesson five, V5 project, Ableton project info dot ALS. And now there's a samples folder. And if I expand this, the samples that were imported well, here we go, it's all the samples from the uh, 808 kit. Uh, my percussive sample, there's my conga right there. 
So now if I need to share this with somebody else, if I need to move this from one computer to the other, everything is contained inside of this one project folder. Lovely.